Okay, so for today I'm circling back to the Pine Phone. So after what, what a while, yeah, it's been a little bit that I've had it. What a few weeks now, but I've had time to kind of mess with it and sort of get to know it a bit better per se. It does have some interesting quirks. There are so originally I had said that Plasma Mobile I found kind of clunky, and that still kind of stands true as it is. I ended up, I think I had mentioned it, installing Arch Fosh on to the EMMC, but I put Manjaro KDE Plasma Mobile onto an SD card later on and kind of went back to try it again. And it's still kind of, uh, and I, most of it's due to the way the keyboard works and some of the settings. But again, that can be changed and worked around. It's not quite easy to pull up the keyboard and put it back down. There are a couple other things. Sometimes the oh bottom bar for like going back to home and such disappears out of nowhere. And I'm not quite sure how to bring that up if I can. There's just some of that functionality that maybe is you that you see very common with like Android because you're expecting it because that's what it looks like it's mimicking and it's not quite there still. The dark themes don't quite seem to want to work, but those I think are being worked out. But as I've been messing around with it, I've kind of settled on settled between a few different environments that I think kind of work a bit better. So kind of the two that the the two that I kind of like a bit better are Lomiri and Fosh. So Fosh is a really common one. It's basically the default one on the Librem 5. And Purism's worked on that a lot. It's a modified GNOME. So there there's still some kind of interesting quirks with it. Squeakboard isn't as nice as the keyboard with Plasma Mobile and Lomiri, but it's still very functional. It does have a special terminal layout, so it does have the arrow keys in the top bar over the top of the keyboard. So that's really nice, whereas some of the other ones like Lomiri don't quite have that. But other than that, when it comes to the general user interface, Fosh kind of like opens up the menu by default. I'd like to kind of have an option to where I can like, when there are no apps running, I can just like look at the wallpaper screen rather than like have the menu up all the, the application view up all the time. But it is what it is and it works pretty decently. And the I've never had a problem with like the bottom bar disappearing really. And it's really easy to bring the keyboard up because there's a keyboard pop-up button in the bottom corner on that um, activities or application menu bottom bar as well. And then you've got the toggles on the top and the power menu that's successful from there along that stuff. The settings are kind of limited from what you might get in the standard GNOME desktop. But I believe you can install Gnome Tweak. What's really nice, though, is both Arch and Manjaro, by default, use the dark theme. So you're not getting your eyes blasted out. I believe a couple of the others use a light theme by default, but there's not really a way to change that currently. Unless you install, like, Gnome Tweak or some other application to mess with it, or you're messing around in the Gnome settings on the CLI. Which... Of course, all of these have a terminal installed. So Fosh has kind of been like the one I've used the most. Lemiri kind of felt clunky at first and it kind of turned me off. But as I've kind of like dabbled with it a bit more, it's kind of like, okay, I think I can get used to it. There aren't as many things in it as there might be in UB ports, in like the notification drawer, top 
pull down, but it still has a lot to it. I'm sure they're working on that on the Manjaro team for that particular image. But it's in a pretty decent state on Manjaro currently. And Lomiri uses a bunch of swipe gestures rather than like a virtual button like some of the others do. So like you'll pull from one side to open up the application or the multitask view, the other side to open your app drawer, of course, and so on. There's not one from swiping up from the bottom, but it is what it is. What What's nice about the Pine Phone is it makes it easy to kind of switch through all these different distros because when you pop in an SD card and it's bootable, it will boot up to the SD card by default without like asking you whether you want to boot to it. So you're not just stuck with one thing and having to reflash the EMMC all the time. So you can have like your standard operating system and then mess around with others at the same time. So I've got like three different SD cards that I picked up for like 15 bucks. And I've kind of been like switching them around. And I've got a couple that I've kept a few distros on itself that I kind of go back to and mess around with a little bit more. So there's like one more that I've been messing around with, and that's SXMO. So this is actually a fork of a lot of suckless tools. So like DWM, ST, and a few others. And so it's like a suckless phone environment. And the people working on it have done a lot of work. So like now, for example, their fork of D menu, which kind of resembles a default trophy in dark theme, has some better touch compatibility and a few other things. And icons. So you've got icons, better touch support, and it works actually works really well. There's also a few scripts that they include with it, which I appreciate for like searching YouTube and that kind of thing. So you can search for a few YouTube videos, select the number of results you get, and then it'll open that video in MPV. And of course, this can be adapted for other things as well that you can open an MPV like Twitch streams and so on. I haven't quite gotten to that, but that's something that is a really good option that you have. So you can open up your Twitch streams and have a history list of what streams you've opened in a D menu script, kind of like what they did with the YouTube script, because it keeps track of the history and you can go back through and use old searches in the history just by tapping the option, basically. The other thing is you still, you do have multiple desktops, which is kind of cool because a lot of the phone environments don't do that. So by default, you've got four. You could add more if you wanted to. There's actually a whole user manual that explains all of the customizations you can make to it. And they do have their own keyboard. It has a lot of functionality, but it is kind of clunky. It's a very lightweight keyboard, but it has like all the keys that you need if you go to the right section of the keyboard. And so there's not really any like separate language ones. The only one they've got is a standard QWERTY. So, but you do have the option of creating additional layouts for it. I, I've kind of gotten really comfy with SXMO. The only issue that I think I would have with trying to daily drive it is the fact that receiving calls is kind of clunky. So you get the vibrate, you get the light going off and everything else, but you don't get the pop-up. So if there were a thing implemented that pulled up a D menu script what all when you get a call rather than just like vibrating and making sounds and then expecting you to go into the system menu and answer the call yourself manually it would be nice be since they got that to work and it's monitoring the modem already that way i don't see why you couldn't do a d menu pop-up and unlock the screen 
but it is what it is. It kind of works. Texting, you're basically using Vim for texting and writing your messages. So it's... If you can get around that, then that's an option. I'm not sure how you'd read your message history. I haven't messed around with that. But it is still in a clunky state, but it's in a less clunky state than when it was. So like 1.2.0 was a bit more clunky than 1.3.0. But SXMO is really shaping up to be a good environment. And then there are still more to come. There's a void-based distro that was recently released called Expedus OS. And it's based, the environment that he's developing is based on F XFCE. And he's got a lot of work to do on it to get hide the mouse, do the touch support, and everything else. But y currently it looks like the default XFCE desktop basically running on the pine phone i haven't tried that out yet but yeah one thing to note with the difference between like lemire and fosh and xs sxmo is lemire and fosh run on wayland so in order to run x applications you're basically running them on x wayland so if you install like ungoogled chromium on that it does look kind of chunky so what it does is it's kind of, it has this like upscaled fuzzy look, kind of like you're playing your old computer games on a high-res monitor, whereas SXMO runs on X. And what makes that interesting is most of the applications aren't actually scaled up like they are with like some of the other environments for better touch support. So you're sitting there trying to tap these little UI pieces in order to get things to work. What's nice is SXMO does have some application detection, so you can open up an application menu, and it pops up a D menu thing that lets you do various functions depending on the application you have open. So SD has its own, Firefox has its own. They for have a patched version of Surf, that they use that has its own D menu thing. So you aren't just stuck with like trying to tap the interface. You do have like a few menu options. I'd recommend kind of swimming around the application menu stuff so that you can get an idea of what applications are currently supported by that, but more can be added. So SXMO is kind of one of the more flexible and customizable ones. A couple of the others require adding things here and there in order to kind of get the tweaking to work or you're running everything through the CLI. SXMO, of course, you're running a lot of stuff through the CLI. And you're customizing configs, but in some ways that's easier than some of the other options that you've got for customization because you don't have to go through some different hoops, I guess. But yeah, that, that's kind of been my experience so far with the OSs. Um, I ran into some interesting quirks. So I guess uh, some of the boards have a draining problem when the power's off, so the battery will drain while the power's off, because, and so you've got to short out some stuff. There's a guide on it online but i had ended up leaving it turned off overnight and when i woke up it wouldn't really turn on so it would like turn on for like a split second and then turn right off so i put it on pow oh the power to charge and it was like doing this screen flicker thing and a couple of like not even turning on on wall power and then I eventually got it to turn on, and it was stuck at 3% for like half the day. Then when I unplugged it, it updated the battery power level, and it's like, what? So it's back to kind of back to normal, but not quite. And so when I went to support, they responded, and so they basically suggested try to reflash the Mobian 
a Mobian build and check its power level and see if it's been resolved. So, and I guess it, there's an issue where it'll like stick at 85% and it looks like it's not getting fully charged, but it's really over 85%. So it's no issue. And that's something that I've noticed is sometimes the battery reporting kind of jumps up and down. So when you're getting it, kind of be aware of that, that that can be an issue. That's kind of what I've been messing with with the Pine Phone. Again, I've mostly been messing around. I haven't really put a SIM card in it. So I've tr messed with Sailfish OS a little bit but not all that in-depth. It was kind of clunky for me, so I might have to try it again and see what happens. But yeah, if you have any suggestions or if there's some other stuff that doesn't show up on the wiki for the Pine Phone that you can suggest. Again, it's still kind of in early stages, so there are a lot of applications that won't fit to the screen. But convergence is a thing too, so I... Yeah. Oh, you can join the Discord, any other chats that I have linked in there. You can send me money at the links also linked down in the description. And I will see you in the next one.